So this is going to be part two in a series on uh, A1C goals and uh, level of control of diabetes and prediabetes. If you're thinking, well, I don't have to worry about that. Well, if you're 50, you're probably going to have to worry about it in a few years. If you're 60, you probably should worry about it. Um, there's a lot more of us with uh, blood sugar problems than we realize. For example, this is the UCLA study. John did a great uh, video on it a few months ago. 46%, this is out of uh, the LA Times, 46% of Californians have prediabetes. Well, when you look at it, actually over half of Californian adults have uh, either diabetes or prediabetes. <clears throat> Let me show you that again. All California adults, 9% have uh, diabetes and 46% have prediabetes, according to the, use, uh, the LA Times, but they didn't do the research. They're just quoting UCLA. And again, if you want details on it, you can go to John's video. Now, <clears throat> that's not the point of this study. The point of this study is, or this video, is okay, so I've got car carb metabolism problems. I have insulin resistance, prediabetes, diabetes. What's the best A1C goal for me? And <clears throat> the answer may surprise you. Uh, but before we get there, <clears throat> a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F O R D Brewer, uh, Ford like the car, uh, Brewer like Milwaukee, B R E W E R. This is the prevention channel. Um, I'm a physician. I started off in ER, got very focused on prevention after uh, seeing what, what people bring in, uh, the damage they bring into the ER. <clears throat> now, um, so let's get, uh, let's dive right into discussion about A1C goals. Uh, if you haven't read this book, it's Jenny Rule, J E. N N Y R U H L. She uh, she's got a great website. <clears throat> it's called Blood Sugar One Hundred and One. This book is more, I think, more popular than the website. Here's one of the reasons why. <clears throat> the web the website is not too attractive looking. It's sort of plain Jane looking. Um, but why am I quoting it? It is an excellent website. Uh, it's won a lot of awards. I'm actually going to do a separate video on that. It's uh, Blood Sugar 101, uh, what they don't tell you about diabetes. Um, <clears throat> the reason I'm quoting this coming out of the blocks on this video is uh, Jenny Rule, I think, is a great example of people who would say tighter control. So what do, what do I mean by tighter control? Well, here you go. Why lowering your A1C below 6.0 is not dangerous? Again, this is for diabetics. Uh, healthy blood sugar targets and the 5% club, they normalize their diabetic blood sugars. Can you? And so can you. So uh, the 5% club, if you, again, I'll do another video on that, on that website. I've done another video on Jenny Rule's book, Blood Sugar 101 and Diet 101. They're both very good. Uh, she's not a, a trained physician, but again, <clears throat> she does, I don't know that she generates most of the content. Um, a huge portion of the content for her website is generated very practically by people who have diabetes. So again, great website <clears throat> and the 5% club. Let's go back and talk about that just a second. <clears throat> this is people who keep their hemoglobin A1C below six. Most docs consider that normal, a normal A1C. Um, <clears throat> I'm a little bit more uh, strict than that. The highest A1C I've had was either 5.6, 5.7, um, and I consider that too high. Uh, and as you know from some of my other videos, I do uh, take metformin. I have had uh, uh, pioglitazone a few times in the past, um, and that's to maintain a very low hemoglobin A1C. Well, now let's switch over for a second and talk about 
the vast majority of the medical community and the folks that create the standards. The American Diabetes Association. Uh, this was published in Diabetes Care in 2018. Now, <clears throat> they have, a very, again, as you might imagine, a very different set of standards. And in fact, their standards really haven't changed since they uh, did these standards, ADA Diabetes Care Standards, um, uh, Intensive Glycemic Control and the Prevention of Cardiovascular Events. This was done in 2009. And when you go back nine years later, the uh, standards for glycemic targets from the ADA still have not changed significantly. So what are they? <clears throat> well, let's uh, go through that. A1C goals. Uh, they have, obviously, information on uh, continuous glucose monitoring, hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, more of the immediate stuff. But we're talking about A1C goals in this series of videos. Here's the first one. According to them, uh, an A1C, a reasonable A1C goal for many non-pregnant adults is 7%. Uh, <clears throat> Providers might reasonably suggest a more stringent A1C goal, such as 6.5%, if there's, the patient has zero to no risk of hypoglycemia, um, they're uh, relatively young, relatively healthy, uh, you're using lifestyle or metformin only, and... Um, uh, again, it's an aggressive goal, according to the ADA. That's 6.5%. Again, compared to uh, what you see with the 5% club, keeping it below 6%. Now, <clears throat> the ADA does go on to say, uh, less stringent A1C goals, such as 8, are more appropriate for older uh, individuals, individuals who may have more risk for hypoglycemia, uh, individuals where you're having to use a lot of medications to, um, to manage that glucose. Well, <clears throat> um, I've actually even heard some docs, and you can find it on the internet where docs will talk routinely about using a goal of nine um, and even higher. Now, here's the thing. I did a, uh, my version of a rant, which wasn't much of a rant, on the first video in this series um, where I think we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. There's real reasons behind this, uh, this difference. Here's where it tends to, um, to float out. You've got your, <clears throat> your older diabetic who's had insulin resistance for 20 years unrecognized. They've done a lot of damage to their arteries already. They've got kidney disease, some eye disease. Um, at that point, uh, you have less benefit for cardiovascular risk. And again, it's cardiovascular risk that is the major risk for diabetics and prediabetics. It's not so much the sugar itself. It's the damage to the arteries and cardiovascular risk. Uh, risk, heart attack, stroke. Now, <clears throat> there are other things, other components too, uh, old versus young. So it, it's more, maybe more appropriate for young, young meaning 50s, 60s, uh, somebody who's even in their 70s if they're just now developing insulin resistance. Here's another major comparative difference. Um, <clears throat> polypharmacy and lifestyle. If you're able to manage a a low hemoglobin A1C uh, without polypharmacy, uh, mostly with lifestyle, again, clearly should do it. Uh, in the studies that we talked about, you saw, uh, you saw a lot of debate, you saw a lot of frustration from the medical community, but it was real. Um, these older diabetics that have a lot of problems 
you actually ended up and you had to manage you had to keep uh, this tight control with polypharmacy a lot of meds uh, <clears throat> you actually had increases in mortality rate uh, some of it appeared to be due to hypoglycemia some of it appeared to be due they didn't they weren't clear what it was but it didn't appear to be hypoglycemia um, most of it did appear to be associated with uh, polypharmacy. For those of you who have uh, remained this long, thank you again for your attention, and we'll talk about it a little bit later in some uh, other videos. Thank you.